Hi, this is Patrick with Trusty Huckster Mercantile. Welcome to my channel and welcome to my re pre-recorded drop sale, which is taking place on Easter Sunday. I am participating in a shop hop that has been uh, uh, curated, uh, coordinated by Beth at Carolina Princess Sweet Treats and Pretties. And if you are watching my video and do not know what I am talking about, uh, this drop sale is one of many that are being released throughout the afternoon on Easter Sunday. I am uh, partway into the sale. It started at 4 p.m. Eastern uh, on Easter Sunday. Uh, you are currently watching me, if you're watching it, as it's being released. It is approximately a little after 6 p.m. Eastern, and it will be running uh, through the evening. Sorry, while I look down, uh, the last sale is at 9 p.m. Eastern. And if you look at the uh, description of my video, I will have a link to all of the sales uh, that are running throughout the day. Uh, the one that is coming up right after me is actually Dolores from Miss Dam Jewelry, D-A-M Jewelry, uh, coming, in, coming to you from the UK. Uh, so she will have, I'm sure, some great uh, items as well as some jewelry as she's very much known for. But the idea behind the drop sale is, be, particularly because it's Easter Sunday, these are not live. So if you've never participated in a drop sale, you've not seen my drop sales that I've done, a couple so far, the idea behind them is similar to a live sale. However, hello, I'm not live. I'm alive, but this is not a live uh, play. So what I will be doing is I will be showing you the items that are available for sale. I will be showing you the price and I will be giving you the item number just like I would in a regular live sale. However, because it's not live, because this is not going out as a premiere, there is no live chat. So unlike my normal live sales where you would actually be commenting as I go, as I'm talking, you're claiming going live, what you will actually need to do is pause the video, have another device open, however you want to do it. When I show the item that you're interested in, you will actually go to the comments in the video of the video itself and you will claim in the comments. You will eventually need to send me an email uh, to let me know that you claimed and if you've never bought from me, I need your shipping address but you cannot claim via an email. It's almost impossible for me to determine if, if somebody's claiming in the comments at the around the same time I got the email, it's almost impossible for me to know which came first. So this is full notice that it's being claimed by the comments first. So you would claim in the comments, you would say, I want item number such and such, and the first person to claim that would be the person that will get that item. You will get it at the price that I give you because this is a simple first to claim. There are no auctions, no offer ups. And it uh, is relatively simple. It's just a little bit different. And I did organize one previously. There was a little bit of confusion on that. Uh, we uh, Beth actually coordinated a little panel discussion about the pros and cons of doing it. And we fine tuned it a little bit and she's organized this one and I'm thrilled to be a part of it. So. If this is your first uh, attempt at doing drop sales, I hope you have fun because although everyone has a slightly different philosophy, almost all of our philosophies are we are here to have fun. Yes, we're selling things. Yes, we are you know here to make money as well. But as I've always said, I'm not selling the Mona Lisa. So it's not something to get hung up on. It's not something to get worried about. If you miss out on something, I apologize. It would have been fun if you could have gotten it. But this is just a different way of selling items. And again, because of my scheduling, I haven't even been able to do live sales for the last several weeks, and I don't know when I'm gonna be able to return to them. So this is a way for me to participate because I have a little bit more control of when I record it. It is now the middle of the night because this is when I have free time so I can make this video and hopefully get it edited and posted in time for my time slot on Sunday. So again, this is all happening on Easter Sunday. If you're not catching it at the time it's released, no worries. You can check in the uh, con in the comment section before you start before you continue watching. I will try and give a running tally as I can uh, because I'm not going to be available at the time this sale uh, this video uh, goes out. But I will try and do some updates and letting people know what was claimed so you don't have to sit there and go through all of the comments. If you don't see any notes, you'll just have to look at the comments. It's possible you'll want something that was already claimed, and if that's the case, again, I apologize. It will go to the first person I see a comment from. So those are the general rules, not a lot of rules, but that's just kind of the way it's gonna work. And now I'm gonna go ahead and get into the bulk of the sale. I'm gonna start out with one item that I picked up relatively recently, and I picked it up specifically because I knew I was participating in the sale. 
I don't do kitsch very often, uh, partly because I don't really come across it all that often, and also that's not really my thing. But when I saw this, I knew I had to pick these up, and I knew I had to offer them in the sale, and I'm offering um, multiple sets of these. So unlike all the other items where I only have one, these items, it is a set of Playboy Bunny cocktail sticks. Now I've done a deep dive on swizzle sticks. These are the shorter versions. These are probably about three inches long. So these are like more of the hors d'oeuvres picks, the cocktail picks. I don't, maybe you could have put an olive in it in a very short, maybe a martini glass, but I do believe these are more food picks. And what I have is a set of six in black and two in white. So what you would be claiming is this set of eight and you'll be claiming that set of eight for $5. Now again, what's unique to this is I have four sets. So if somebody else has already claimed some, you still have another chance because there's a total of four that are available. So the first four people that claim the cocktail sticks by entering the number 51 will receive the set of sticks. If you've watched some of my videos and some of my sales in the past, you know that I'm a sucker for ephemera. I like it myself. I have a lot of it in my collection, very specific types and different things that I like to collect, but I even like more picking it up to resell because in many cases, it's not being stored very well. It's shoved in a bag, it's shoved in a drawer, it's in a box. It's going to get torn, it's going to get destroyed. And I want to protect, I, I want to protect the ephemera. I want to protect the paperwork and get it in the homes of people who appreciate it. And I had the opportunity of picking up this set of these little booklets. Now, I was not familiar with these booklets, so they are all a Trotty Vec message. I was not familiar with Trotty Vec, but they all have, they're all kind of, this, they're, you can see they're all the same size, they all the same style, but they have different color covers, and they all have different, you know, motivations. So there's success, uh, good cheer, keep smiling, good wishes, joy, truth, another good wishes, but a different color, and your best. Some of these, most of these do not actually have a copyright to them, but the success one actually does have a copyright, and it says copyright 1938, the Trotty Vec Messengers. So it's, it's got the copyright down there at the bottom. And what it is, is just a little... I don't even know what you would consider it. It's kind of like a little motivational piece. Like this one's about success. So there's a poem about success. Uh, the measure of a man's life is the it, the measure of a man's life is the well spending of it, not the length. And that is a Plutarch quote. So there's just kind of little daily uh, aspirations, motivational the little just do it quote from Sarah Grand, a Theodore Roosevelt quote about a successful life. Uh, the alarm clock, when baby is asleep, it is time to get up. Well, that's pithy. Uh, Balzac, success is nothing but a good idea coupled with hard work. So all of these just have a different theme. Uh, the top, your influence, obedience produces success. That's a Greek proverb. Uh, the bridge you'll never cross, a poem by Grenville Kleiber. And these would be... In some ways, I mean, they're in absolutely perfect condition, so I kind of hate to suggest this, but these would be ideal little pieces to cut out for junk journaling or cut out for formal journaling, you know, that you would be able to put these in the corners of diary pages and things like that because it's actually giving you, maybe you could put the Theodore Roosevelt quote and then you could talk about your response to it or how you're applying it to your, your daily life. They're all in pretty good condition. A couple of them have a little bit of soiling on the front of them, but there are a total of eight. So multiple colors, uh, two reddish ones, two beige ones, some orange green. So you get a whole set of them. I thought they were fun. If I were going to sell these individually, I'd probably sell them for about five bucks a piece because it is, it's something I could just shove into an envelope. It's very easy to ship, but I got a whole set of them and I, I kind of want to keep them as a set. I feel kind of weird breaking up the set. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure they were sold individually, but you know, you could break them up or cut them up, whatever you want to do, because I'm going to go ahead and sell them a set. I'm going to sell it at a much discounted price as a set. So I'm selling a set of eight for only 20 bucks. So less than $3 a piece. So $20 for the VEC messages booklets, 20 bucks by giving me number 39. 
My next item is one that is a personal favorite of mine, and it's actually almost literally a personal favorite because it is a duplicate of something I'm keeping in my own personal collection. So I happened to pick up a group of these, and when I got the, the lot, it had a duplicate of something I already owned, so I am passing it on available in the sale. And what it is, is a chauffeur's license badge. It is a pin back badge. If you follow me on Instagram, you will note that I have been posting these. Uh, it has become my latest infatuation, my latest collection. I have multiples of these from multiple states. They are all pre-war. This one happens to be a 1940 uh, four zero. So 1940 license chauffeur badge from the state of Iowa. So what I'm focusing on is I really like the ones that have the different shapes. Some of them are just circles, some of them are just squares, and at a glance on a hat that doesn't, they, they don't show off as well. This one has this really cool die cut design. And it's actually got, even though it's 1940, it still has kind of reminiscence of like the deco on the edges where you've got the nice little chevrons coming up the sides and then the little state of Iowa down here at the bottom. I, as well as um, uh, several other people, are part of the Brooch Gang, and Tiger and I are part of the Bring Back the Hat Pin. So I'm wearing my hat today. This one, I'm wearing my, my, my vintage Disney shirt, so I have a vintage Disney hat pin on here which happens to be, I don't know how vintage it is because uh, the movie's from like the 90s, but it is my favorite character from my favorite Disney movie, Hades from Hercules. Uh, but anyway, um, when I am wearing, going out and about, I have a little chauffeur's cap and I pin these onto my cap and I change them out every time I go out. So I have a collection, most of them, a lot of them are from Illinois because I'm trying to get multiple years from Illinois because that's where I live. Uh, but then I'm also collecting from other states as well. So again, I actually have a 1940 Iowa. So this one is a duplicate. So I'm selling this one. And because I didn't specifically purchase this to resell, it was just part of a lot. I'm really, I'm actually selling it for what I paid for. Uh, so the, what I paid for it. So these are, they go for around $15. Sometimes I found them for as little as 10. Sometimes they go to 20 or 30, depending on the state. For Iowa, $15 was a fair price. So I'm passing that on for $15 for the Iowa 1940 chauffeur badge, giving me number 23. I have a lot of favorite items in today's drop sale because I really, I haven't had a live sale in many weeks, but I have continued to source items. So I have picked up a lot of things that I specifically wanted to sell and just really haven't had an opportunity to do so. So you're getting a kind of a high concentration of some of my favorites, and this is definitely one of them. I uh, picked this up relatively recently and knew specifically it was going to be sold in, a, in either a live sale or a drop sale just because it's more fun to show live. What this is, is and you can kind of get an idea of it, but if you look really, pay it really close attention to the images in the corners, it is a card table cover. This one's about 30 inches by 30 inches and each corner is I think a penguin, I don't know, his feathers are a little furry, so I'm not sure if that's a penguin or some sort of a bird hanging on a lamppost. He's got little spats on his, on his feet and he's holding a card suit. So we've got clubs, you've got hearts, you've got spades, and you've got diamonds. This was done by hand. You can tell by the back, it is not machine done. Somebody actually hand did this and you can see the stitches aren't all even and their hand knotted off. So it just adds to the, the quaintness of it. And it looks like it was machine edged. So they, they did machine the binding, but that's, you know, that's fairly common. So machines have been around for a long time. Uh, but it is kind of a, I don't know, peach color, I guess with then the red, the black, and the white in the corners. These are sized to go on, you know, these probably would have been from the 30s. This would have been on like those big, the fold out card tables, but it goes on a regular card table. You'd set this on there. You'd have a little place to put, you know, your nut dish, your ashtray, place to put your cards. And it's something you could change out for your bridge party. You could have a different one every time you had your friends over to play cards. I love these, uh, but I'm not starting a new collection. I actually have several of these, which will be coming for sale 
I, I'm currently involved in a show and I'm doing the set, set dressing for the show. And I purchased about a half a dozen of these that are more clearly of the era for the show. This one might be getting a little bit early. I think I said, or later, I think I said 30s. This is probably more likely 50s um, because of the colors and the designs, but it's that whole era of when you, you know, you brought the friends over to play bridge. But the idea of these card table toppers goes back to the 20s and 30s. Um, and they have, they have just, they're such great designs. And when they're done by hand, they're so much fun to have. I picked these up. I actually picked most of them up together, but some of them I did pick up individually. I can't remember if this one was an individual pickup or not. But I always get the, they're, they go for a really nice price because most people don't know what to do with them. This is just, it's great for display. You can even put this at the end of your bed. You could put this at, uh, as a small tablecloth on an end table. Uh, you could fold it so that you just see, you know, an individual piece of it and you could have it sitting in a vignette. There's just a lot of opportunities to, to use these. And if you're into collecting linens and textiles, it's a fantastic addition that I'm passing off at a really good price. So it's $15 for the little, I don't know, you have to tell me whether you think that he's a penguin. I'm not sure. Uh, I love the spats though. Uh, $15 for the card table topper, $15 by giving me number 38. Now that things have started to open up uh, post-pandemic, although numbers are getting bad again, but uh, auction houses have started opening up. And I found a local auction house that's actually a live auction. It's a, it's a ton of fun to go to. I don't always pick up a lot of stuff at it because it's it's just a, it's a it's a huge mix but it's fun. The people there are super friendly. They sell food and and drink and it's just it's it's some way to spend some time. But when I was at the auction house this particular visit, this item came up for sale and I knew I had to get it. For people that are not familiar with my channel, uh, in my past life, uh, prior to my divorce, my wife and I owned a quilt store for 10 years. And so I know more about fabric than I probably should. I don't, I, I'm not even gonna say don't typically, I do not carry quilts. I find it in, insulting how little quilts sell for because I know how much they cost to make and how much time goes into making them. But what I do still have an affinity for is a lot of the sewing notions, uh, particularly the vintage ones, because they're just cute collectibles, whether you're a sewer or not. They're small pieces, and this is a this is just a great example. Is this little luster wear, and I'd never seen one before. It's a little luster wear pin cushion. Now this one happens to come with a whole boatload of pins, um, but it still has you know a little. It, I'm going to assume it was part of it. It's kind of a little pinned on a ribbon that's part of the um, that's part of the pin cushion. It's got the luster finish. It's got little roses painted onto it. It looks like a Japan piece, but it is not marked, but I'm just going to assume that it somehow wore off, but that's, that's where it's coming from. The pin cushions themselves, you can tell they have the feel, they have some age to it. So I would think that this is thirties, forties, uh, would be my guess. Uh, I do not know for sure, but you know, again, we're getting into a nice vintage piece. I did not pay a lot of money for it. It's super cute. And I really just wanted to be able to pass this on because pin cushions are very collectible as well as with spring coming, you know, you could change out the pins and put little floral pins in there. And you've got a little Easter basket or a little spring basket of flowers because the design is just super sweet, super simple. And it's only 10 bucks. So $10 for the little lusterware pin cushion basket by giving me number 63. So I mentioned I don't do kitsch very often, and I guess this probably doesn't go into kitsch, but it might be getting borderline. I've offered these before, and it's been a long time since I've come across one, and I could not pass up. It is a little hostess apron. So it's this blue, I don't know, what would this be considered, chiffon? You know, so it's a see-through. It certainly would not serve any purpose in cooking. You know, you would not be able to do anything, but it has a, a fairly decent sized pocket on it, which has a floral applique, and then these rows of uh, lace and the trim. Um, when I've sold these before, we always started, okay, I'm gonna try and put this on. It does wrap around my sizable girth, so it uh, has a fairly long, um, it has a fairly long cord to it or waistband to it. Um, so it, it, it will, uh, fit a variety of sizes. So it is in great condition. Um, the applique is, 
I think it's just curling a little bit. I don't think it's supposed to be dimensional, but it, it's still well attached. You just have kind of like the leaves have started to kind of curl over. Uh, so I don't know if those need to be tacked down, but it's still sort of securely there. And I don't see any stains. I don't see any tears. I don't see any wear to the chiffon. There's a little places where some of the, you can see, I don't know if you can even see it. Um, like it's, it's, there's a, some loose, I don't even want to say threads, but there's kind of like a little bit of looseness. It doesn't even look at like showing up on camera, but it's it's in good condition. Beautiful little piece. Uh, I picked it up at a good price. I think these are fun, and I, I know a lot of people like to collect these. Whether they wear them or not, I don't know. But if you're going to have the card game with the card table topper, you can now have an, a little hostess apron to wear while you're serving your canapes because you can pick it up for 10 bucks. So $10 for the little blue hostess apron, $10 by giving me number seven. The next item I'm offering, I'm actually pretty excited about because it's something that I just typically don't get. I don't come across it. And there, I wanted to have it as part of a, the either a live sale or a drop sale because in this little vintage, online vintage community for these YouTube sales, Tonala or Tonala Pottery is has a, a is very attractive or very collected and i simply don't come across it very often in some cases i'll find mexican pottery i'll find the duck versions a lot but it's not marked tonala these are both marked on the bottom this one's a little bit easier to see so i'll show this one uh, it actually has the artist's either name or initials and that's something we did a deep dive katie and i did a, a deep dive on this a while ago that if you have the initials or the name that that's, you have to earn that right. So this shows a liar, higher level of artistry uh, in the region, but it actually does say Tonala and it does say Mexico on there. A lot of times it just says Mexico. So when I saw that these were marked, I definitely picked them up. So they have a similar floral pattern to the front, you know, kind of the blues and the greens, and then a similar pattern on the back with some leaves and then kind of like an aqua um, polka dots and then some stripes along the sides. You've got the holes in the top. This one has the three holes and it's bigger, so I guess this is supposed to be the pepper. And then this one has the two small two holes and is actually physically smaller, so maybe this one's the salt. You can mix it up, you can do whatever you want because they're not marked. But again, I don't carry Tanala very often. So when I found it, I was excited to have something that was marked and I got it at a good price, so I'm passing it off at a good price. 10 bucks for the Tanala salt and pepper shakers by giving me number 90. All right, feel I may need to give a little bit of a trigger warning on this one. Uh, so if you have an issue with clowns, avert your eyes. I don't necessarily have a problem with clowns, but I also am not attracted to clowns, so I don't really carry them all that often. But this one I couldn't pass up. It is a cookie cutter, but check out the way this cookie cutter is made. It is this marbleized technique. First of all, there's a lot of detail for it being a cookie cutter. Uh, you know, you've got like the impressions of the eyes and the eyebrows, you know, some details on the collar, the buttons, everything's done really, really nicely. But then if you flip it over, what you also discover, if I can hold it in a way that you can see it, uh, come on, can we do this? Well, there we go, Cleaware. This is actually a collectible brand in and of itself. It's Cleaver made in England. So I couldn't find the actual clown, but the Cleaver brand is a collected brand in and of itself because it has this very cool marbleized finish. It's just what that's what they did or how they did it. I do believe it's still plastic. I don't think it's, I think it's later than Bakelite, uh, but I don't know for sure. But what makes this collectible is the Cleaware. I picked this up uh, very inexpensively and the prices of what they go for range all over the place. I don't know what a clown cookie cutter should go for. So I'm selling it what I would normally, just because I think it's cool, it's what I think it should sell for, five bucks. So $5 for a Cleaware marbled, Clown cookie cutter, $5 by giving you number 52. So if you're still with me and you didn't turn me off after the, after the clown, uh, my last item is something that had I not had one something similar to it before, I would not have known what this was. It is a little matchbook style folder. 
happens to be from U.S. Steel. Uh, my family has a background in the steel industry, so that's, I thought this was kind of cool. And I originally thought, uh, because I picked it up at the same location, I picked up all that sewing stuff, originally thought it was going to be a sewing kit. It is not. When you open it up, there are these little tissue papers in it. And in the top, it says United States Steel Supply Division. So it's kind of like a little advertising for the headquarters office in Chicago, Illinois. Now, the zip code that shows on there is a single digit zip code, which means this predates 1963. So I don't know if you know what that is, but again, because I had sold something similar to this before, I knew what the tissue papers are. They are lipstick tissues. So you would apply your lips, you would apply your lipstick, you would then kiss the piece of paper, so it's kind of like a blotter, like a lipstick blotter. Then you tear the piece of uh, tissue out, and you can see some of them have been torn out, so this is used. Uh, throw it away, and then you have this, you just tuck it into your handbag, and you could be promoting U.S. Steel at the same time you're blotting your lipstick. So I thought it was kind of an interesting combination. This one doesn't have the highest level of condition. I mean, it's got a couple of condition issues. There's a little bit of a tear there. You can see there's a little bit of a crease. Uh, because it's U.S. Steel, it should go for more money, and I would normally have sold this on eBay. But because of the condition, I just think it's a fun item, and not everyone's going to know what it is. But just it's one of those little kind of cool things from a very specific era in time that uh, I'm going to pass it off for five bucks. So five dollars for the little U.S. Steel tissue, uh, lipstick tissue, lipstick blotter tissue packet. It's only five bucks by giving me number 70. And that's it. Uh, this is relatively short. We All of the videos as part of the drop sales were going to be 30 minutes long. And so I'm going to wrap things up so that I can finish on time because I want to make sure you have time to go on to the next video. Again, this is part of the uh, drop sale shop pop that was created by Beth at Carolina Princess Sweet Treats and Pretties. Uh, it started earlier in the evening with Vintage and Vi Vinyl, then Kibi's Collectibles, then Thrifter Junker Vintage Hunter, then Carolina Princess Sweet Treats and Pretties. Those were the videos that released prior to mine. Uh, following mine, so if you are if you look at your clock and it's coming up on 6:30 Eastern, uh, you can jump over to Miss D A M Jewelry, Miss Dam Jewelry, and see Dolores's sale. Following her for the rest of the evening, every half an hour after uh, Miss Dam Jewelry, at, I'm sorry, 6:30 Eastern, is the thrill of the thrift, then Vintage Uprising Texas, then Pamela Blanchard, then Dear Angela's Vintage, and wrapping things up with the Antique Nomad, whose video will start at 9 p.m. Eastern. So again, all of those links will be in the description of this video. Please note, particularly for the ones uh, going for the rest of the evening, if you're trying to watch these in real time, if you go to someone's channel at one minute prior to their live time, you will not see the video. So you either need to search for the video and just see if it happens to be in the search engine or wait until the, that exact 30 minute mark, it will populate. So just keep that in mind. If you're, if you're early, you're gonna have to sit around and wait for it, just refresh a couple times. And once you hit that half hour mark or that, you know, half the half hour half, or the hour mark, the video should start. So just keep that in mind. And again, don't stress out. Don't, you know, hopefully you'll find some things you like. And if you're not catching the videos live, just again, look at the video, the descriptions of all of the uh, resellers' videos. You'll probably either see the comments of what's been claimed or I will try and put a summary of what's still available in the description so that if you're watching this much later, you'll know, okay, these things are already already claimed or this is what's, what's left. Um, so, and I really appreciate uh, you following all of the other channels, checking out some of their videos, and then letting us know what you think of this format. I've now only done this a handful of times. Uh, there's a couple other people that are starting to organize some, and I think I, I really like the idea, and we just wanna make sure we're doing it and building them up in a way that people enjoy them and maybe educating people of how, the best ways to do it. You know, We're looking at maybe trying to do playlists or do we do premieres? What, you know, how do we do this to make it as user-friendly as possible? So if you've got comments or thoughts on what you liked about the way these are structured or how you think they could be better, more than welcome welcome to uh, hear your opinion. Just drop that into the comments or drop me a private message and let me know your thoughts. But uh, most of the fun, most overall, 
Hope you had fun. Hope you enjoyed the items that I had uh, made available. I will try to be posting some other videos. My, my channel's been a little empty for a, a while just because of my schedule. So this is motivating me to start doing a little bit more. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the live sale and I hope you enjoy uh, what I might be putting up on my channel to come. So thank you very much for your time and thank you for putting your trust in Trusty Huckster. I'll talk to you all again soon. Bye-bye.